Hello everyone, welcome back to Camelot and the conquest thereof. Okay, so uh, we had just gotten some money and there are many uses for that in medieval times as well as in our modern world. Uh, so let's see, what did we have here in the castle? I think the, the one place here that I ha really haven't explored still is uh, this place here. This is Merlin's room. So let's go ahead and check out Merlin's room. So as before, Merlin kind of turns around to face us. He doesn't say anything. He just kind of stands there and stares at us. Uh, so let's uh, take a look at him. I am as I appear. Oh, I think if you say... Yeah, if you say, look, man, he says, I am no mere man. I am Merlin. Yeah, so Merlin is just as he appears. Uh, okay. Uh... Uh, somehow I suspect that there is more to Merlin than meets the eye, but, um, okay, I can't fault him for a succinct answer. Uh, can we talk to Merlin? Let me get that mouse cursor out of the way. The search for the Grail will be long and difficult. Though I will not physically travel with you, my spirit will be you to guide and advise as I am able. Choose carefully where your search will take you, for once you leave Camelot, you may not return. Why not? I'm the king. I mean, can I come and go as I please? I mean, yeah, I understand I'll have to go and travel, but don't I need to... I mean, can, can I not come back to my own castle if I want to? All right. Does Merlin have anything else to say? No, he says the same thing. All right, let's take a look around. Um, as you see, my room is quite full. Take care that you do not disturb any of the objects within. You know what's funny? He says his room is quite full, but honestly, the only really cluttered part is this table here, as opposed to, like, if I think about where I live, I mean, in my apartment, I, I have stuff all over the floor because I don't have space on, I don't have enough room on, on just, like, one little table like this for everything that I have, so I've just got, I mean, I have, like, a bookcase, and it's all full, and so once the bookcase and the table get full, then everything else just has to go on the floor because there's nowhere else to put anything. But different people have different standards of tidiness. It's, it's not that I don't care about tidiness. I just don't have space for the stuff that I have. Um, anyway, all right. So what do we have here? Um, there's a tapestry on the wall. Can we look at the tapestry? In the center is a lab labarum, the symbol of Mithras. The circle with the descending cross is the symbol of Venus. Um, oh, yeah. Um... So, this symbol of Venus is obviously used today as a female symbol. I don't know why Merlin... Ha I mean, maybe Merlin's a transsexual. Maybe he's actually a woman living in a man's body, and that's why he has that there. I don't know. Uh, he claims this is a labarum. So, we're actually... I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, because several people posted comments on this symbol and said it's not appropriate to represent Mithras. Let's, let's go back to that just a bit later. Um, can we get the tapestry? Obtain only what you need. Your burdens are already great. All right, can I look behind the tapestry? All right, I didn't really... Okay, fine. All right, look at... Is there a chest there on the ground? That is my personal chest. I keep various odds and ends in there. Look inside if you like. All right. Inside my chest is a lodestone, a magical stone that will always show you where true north lies. This one is shaped like a tiny sword, the tip of which will point to north as it dangles from a string attached to its center. Take it, Arthur. I prepared it especially for you. Oh, thank you, Merlin. You're you're very uh that's very kind of you. Alright, sure, let's take that lodestone. And now if we look at our inventory. Yeah, we have the lodestone. Cool. Can I use the lodestone to show where north is? Hey! I can. It actually pops up, and it actually shows that north is towards the, the ceiling. That's that's pretty cool. All right. Let's see what's on this table here. Here I conduct my delicate experiments in alchemy. The table is covered with beakers and flasks. Uh, I think he meant... I think he assumed I was talking about that table there. I was actually talking about this. Like, what is this scroll thing? The scroll is from Jerusalem, written in Aramaic. You may read my translation of it scribbled there in the margins. Okay. Let's read the scroll. 
According to the... I don't know if I'm reading this in Merlin's voice, or... I guess, I guess I am. According to the writer of this scroll, a mule is of great value in Jerusalem. The writer says, so great is the value of a mule that is sure of foot and gentle of nature, that it is above all the gold and treasures of the earth. Sounds a bit exaggerated to me, but that is the gist of it. All right. Okay, cool. Is that a sword hanging on the wall there? That is my sword and perfectly ordinary. My weapons are of a less physical nature. All right. Look at the uh, candle. I'm sure you've seen enough candles in your life to realize that mine are no different. Can I take a candle? King you may be, but do not lay hands upon that which belongs to Merlin the Enchanter. Oh, really? Oh. Oh, you think you can challenge the king, huh? You think you can get sassy with the king, do you? Well, let's, uh, let's see about that. Let's... Let's uh, put this to the test there, shall we, Merlin? If I wanna, if I wanna darn well take your candle. By the red dragon, I will not warn you again. Do not lay hands upon anything that is not meant for you. Oh, you're, you're getting, you're, you're gonna get it, Merlin. You're, you're gonna spend some time in the brig. Or I guess we, well, we don't have a brig here, but like, a, like the, the dungeon, the whatever they have here for bad people like you. I'm gonna take your candles, buddy. Since you cannot keep your hands to yourself, you can do without them for a while. When you apologize, I'll consider returning you to your native form. So, Merlin's turned us into a dog, and it looks like a, a flea-ridden dog at that. That's nice. Uh, kill Merlin. I'm waiting for your apology. Pee on rug. Oh, you're waiting for my apology, are you? I don't think I can do anything else. All right, fine. Apologize. That pathetic whine tells me that you are sorry, but do not do it again. So, what do we do, of course? We do it again. It would seem you refuse to learn a lesson. Be gone from my sight. And that's it. We died... <laughs> At Merlin's hand, Merlin turned us into a dog just for... That seems just a bit extreme to me. Like, I understand it's it's annoying if somebody keeps trying to touch your stuff. But, first of all, we're a king. We're, we're the king of this land. And secondly, I'm just looking. I'm not trying to steal his stuff. I'm not trying to take these things from him. I just want to look at things. Uh, but okay, we have to we have to be a little cautious around Merlin. He's uh, he d he's He's very sensitive about people's touching his stuff. Can we look at the shelves here? That is a small dragon skull and a large crystal on top of the shelves. My books fill the shelves below. The other objects are of no affair of yours. Can we read the books? My books are not for you to touch. However, feel free to consult your own Liber Ex Doctrina, known in the Vulgar as the Book of Law, whenever you like. Uh, the manual for this game, which accompanied this game, was called the Liber Ex Doctrina, which... Um, I believe translates as something like uh, freedom from doctrine or... Well, Liber is a funny word because, you know, it, it can mean book. Like today in, in Spanish, for example, Spanish book is Libro. But Liber also means liberty or freedom. So I guess it's kind of like it can be both the book of doctrine or freedom of doctrine or something like that. I don't know. Um... Okay, so we can't look at the books here. We can, we can we, we're welcome to read the game manual. Thank you, Merlin, for your kind permission to read the manual that came with the game that we paid for. But uh, we can't look at his stuff there. All right. Uh, so what what else? He so we had a dragon skull and a large crystal. Let's look at the skull. It is the skull of a small dragon, a gift from Saint George. All right. I guess that's the. Oh, I see, that's the white thing there. I was thinking, like, is that the red thing sticking up there? But no, the, I don't know what the red thing is, but that white thing in, that's like covers the entire top. It's behind the red thing. That big white thing is the skull, I guess. All right, can we look at those crystals? It is simply a large and beautiful chunk of quartz. Nothing more. All right. All right, uh, let's look at the table here. 
Here I conduct my delicate experiments in alchemy. The table is covered with beakers and flasks. Look at the beakers. Me, 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 me. I use it for my exper experiments in alchemy, in which I seek to unravel the mysteries of the elements and life itself. Okay. Pretty heady stuff. Okay, the flasks are for the same purpose. I don't think we can use anything, any of that stuff, though. Uh, okay, there's not much else in this room except that map back there. So let's take a look at the map. Oh, he actually just... I like how he actually points toward the map as if we weren't sure. Like, hey, hey, did you see the map there? You were asking me about the map. Hey, check out the map because you, you might have missed it otherwise. It's, it's, it's kind of small. It only takes up like half the room. It is a map of the Summerlands, as your kingdom is often known. What, is there no winter in, in England? Or Britain? Cornwall to the west, and some lands beyond, including the island of Eyre, which of course is, uh, like the ancient name for Ireland, which is... <laughs> which is that island on the left or west side of the map. I, I feel a bit silly saying this, but I, I know that many of my viewers are Americans, and I don't, I don't mean to be insulting, but uh, Americans are known for having some challenges with geography, so at, at the risk of insulting people's intelligence, uh, I will mention that the larger island on the right in the, on the map is Britain, where England is, and the smaller island on the left is Ireland, which is what uh, Merlin is referring to with Ire. How you should study it very closely before you leave and determine where your search for, where your search for the Grail should take you. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, is is that it? Like, are we are we done here? It seems like I've looked at everything here in this room. Uh, I'm pretty sure that there is still stuff that we need to do here. Hold on, let me. So. This game, uh, it's kind of a complex game. I mean, it's not its not necessarily an extremely difficult game, but the game has a lot of nuance to it. It has a lot of things that you can miss. There are really a lot of things in this game, like a lot of little... Not necessarily hidden things, but just things that you wouldn't necessarily uh, think of. So I'm going to be keep checking, you know, my list of stuff and kind of try to not miss anything. I know it's going to be kind of difficult because... Uh, Anyway, all right, let's see here. So I'm just going to look at a, at, at a list of things and try and see what... Okay, so let's actually let's take a look at that rug. We didn't look at the rug, did we? This rug contains mystic symbols, primarily the pentangle, the five-pointed star. Isn't that a pentagram? Because it is made of a single unbroken line, it affords strong protection from spirits who cannot find a place to enter in. All right. Um... Uh, so we're supposed to... Hold on, let me see. We're supposed to say ask about patterns. Yeah, this is like a, a thing that you do. You, you sort of ask about symbols in the game. And I guess because Merlin's with us in spirit, even if not... Well, in this room, he's with us physically, but in the rest of the game, he's not with us physically. He's with us in spirit. And I guess you're, pro you're supposed to ask about the symbols and Merlin will basically explain the mystical or symbol a sim symbolic meaning of the the symbols so for example um there are a number there are a number of symbols in my room upon the tapestry is a is a f filfot i don't know what a filfot is is that the symbol of venus or is that the yellow triangle at the top or something else and labarum the symbol of mithras upon the small square rug is another filfot upon the large round rug is a pentacle and the symbol of venus and a few others not worth mentioning all right, so on the small square rug, I guess that's this here, is another fill thought. So what is a fill thought? Just like, looks kind of like the sun. I don't know what a fill thought is. I would look, should I look it up? Let's look it up. Let me just quickly look up. What, what is a fill thought? See, this is the thing. I kind of, I don't want to, uh, oh. <laughs> uh, okay. A filfot is a swastika. Well, that's uh, a little unexpected. I, I'd like to remind everyone, just in case anyone is not aware, um, I hope that everyone is aware, but just in case anyone's not aware, a swastika has nothing to do with Nazism or fascism or anything like that. It, it, today it's taken on that meaning, but in a pre-modern context, the swastika goes back hundreds or thousands of years, and it, it has no 
association with fascism or anything like that. It's it has taken on that meaning because the Nazis used it, uh, at, you know, as as their symbol. But don't associate it with. Well, today, if you see somebody wearing a swastika, okay, that's that's probably their intended use of it. But you shouldn't assume that. Uh, Historically, that it has anything to, it, it has nothing to do with that. So, just to make that clear, um, that doesn't look like, look like a swastika on that uh, on that little square rug, though. It, it looks like a sun. Like seriously, I don't see anything that looks like a. I don't know. Anyway, all right, whatever. Okay. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So, what are we? Okay, we're apparently supposed to ask Merlin about herbs. I don't know why, because I don't see it. Are there herbs in this room? I dry herbs for both medicinal and culinary purposes. If you truly wish to know more, please feel free to ask about them. So hold on, how are we supposed to know that there are herbs in this room? Because I don't see any. Maybe it's this green stuff on the wall there. Oh! Oh, I didn't realize this. Maybe this was in the game's manual and I didn't, uh, I guess I should have read the, I guess I should have read the manual. Uh, so I know that the original Quest for Glory did this, like the, the original Quest for Glory games did this thing where if you click on something with the right mouse button, it kind of acts as a look command. So by clicking the right mouse button on these things, Merlin tells me that those are herbs. Okay, I need to remember to do that. That's, that's kind of important then. It is a lovely but empty pot. All right. There's a decorative pattern in the small rug. Okay, I need to start looking at stuff because... Oh, that's his desk. Okay, so the thing on the left here is the table, and the thing here on the right is a desk. Okay. This was kind of unusual in the Sierra games. I don't think most other SCI games did this. Uh, I'm pretty sure the King's Quest and Space Quest games that used SCI didn't do this, at least, you know, not the ones that were text-based, like this, that used a text parser like this game. But I, I, knew, I knew that the original Quest for Glory games did this, so I'll need to remember to, like I said, to use that, so... Okay, so we've got the window and see the grounds. That's Merlin. That's the candles. I don't think we missed much. Yeah, that's the map. I don't think we missed too much, but okay. It wouldn't have been obvious to me that these are herbs. All right, let's ask about the herbs. There's mint, which some believe can cure the bite of mad dogs. It comes from the legend of Mintha, a river nymph. Pluto, lord of the underworld, made love to her. Whereupon Pluto's jealous queen, Pro Pro Proserpine, changed Minth into a plant. And Basil, which the untutored mistakenly believe ca causes scorpions to breed. In India it is sacred to the gods Vishnu and Krishna, delicious with beans, peas, and other vegetables. And marjoram, thought useful in healing wounds and many other illnesses, though I like its delicate flavor with fowl and in sausages. And sage, wow. I see now why they why asking about the herbs is optional. Okay, and sage, which the Egyptians believe will make women fertile, and others think it gives immortality. Personally, I like the flavor it imparts to beer and sausages. <laughs> and no question would be complete without bay. To the Greeks and Romans, it was the laurel, and they and they would crown the victors with laurel wreaths. Good grief, Merlin. This, this is a little... gosh. Young girls have been known to burn leaves to make lovers return to them. Prophets, diviners, and the priests of Apollo considered it to have magical properties. The dry leaves make an excellent flavoring in stews. See, this is kind of... Like, Merlin has all this esoteric knowledge about different plants, but it's kind of like... He just likes how they taste. He just likes how they work as seasonings. I, th I think a lot of mystics back in the day kind of functioned like this. They had all this knowledge. They were very, you know, they were intelligent and studied people, uh, well-read, so they knew a lot of trivia about things ranging from geography to herbs and other stuff. But a lot of it was just kind of meaningless knowledge that was used to amaze people. And a lot of it was, was kind of hedonistic. Like it was kind of like, yeah, these herbs are have magical properties and they can bring your your lover back to you and they can heal sicknesses and they can bring wealth and, and whatever. But I just like how they taste in uh, in a stew or something like that. You know, I think, I think that's, kind of, that's kind of how a lot of these uh, mystics operated back in the day. Uh, not saying that Merlin is corrupt necessarily, but he just kind of, I think he, 
I think there is a little bit of an aspect of pseudo-intellectual to him. He, he does have a little bit of the kind of like uh, stewing a lot of knowledge, but uh, really he just likes how... Uh, he, he, he just likes this stuff. All right, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, I guess we should ask Merlin about a lot of stuff. So again, there's just a bunch of stuff that we need to ask about, which it wouldn't necessarily be apparent that you're supposed to ask about those things, but just looking at a walkthrough, you find out that you're supposed to ask about them. So, uh, all right, let's see. What are we doing here? So we want to ask about... Uh, let's see. Can I ask about myself, King Arthur? You can't tell us anything relevant at the moment. Can we ask about Camelot? No, all right. Can we ask about uh, Gwen? She is usually to be found in Habao about this time of day. Yeah, we saw her there. All right, uh, can we ask about the Grail? I can add nothing to what is written in your Liber Ex Doctrina. You should have it with you at all times. Yeah, I, I know, Merlin, thanks. All right, tell me about Lancelot. I do not wish to be indelicate, but the queen might be the best person to ask. Merlin. All right, let's ask about the other knights who went missing. Uh, who are the others? Gawain. I believe the treasurer is a good friend of Sir Gawain and would have the latest news, if any. Okay, I guess that's how we're supposed to know that we're supposed to ask the, the treasurer about, Gaw about Gawain. And the other one was Galahad. He is very popular among your guards, and they'd be first to hear rumor of him. Okay, so we still need to ask the guards about uh, about Galahad. All right, fine. All right, that's uh, that's information. All right, so can I get like a close up of this map? Look. At map. Oh yeah. Okay. Yes, I can. All right. Use arrows to move or select with mouse. So, okay. So I guess this is where we are now. This is this red. This this must be Camelot here. And oh hey, check it out. Shapwick. You know I'm not I'm not going to read all this because. If there's something like this for every one of these towns and locations, yeah, sorry, I'm not going to read all this. You can feel free to read it if you like, but that's Shapwick. Yeah, and this is Camelot. He doesn't say anything about that. Bath. So, yeah, so there is a city called Bath in England, which exists to this day. And I guess that's probably where we get the modern word, like bath in the sense of bathing, because it's famous for its spas, like it was f famous for its healing waters. So I guess there's a, a linguistic connection there. All right. Um, Kingsham, a sixth century prince. All right, fine. That's bath. Avebury. Uh, on this site stands the largest of the stone circles, the remains of an ancient place of worship. Is that Stonehenge? Is that where Stonehenge is? Hold on. I've never been to Stonehenge. I've been to England, but I didn't visit Stonehenge. I do not know exactly where it is. I'm assuming Merlin is talking about Stonehenge, but let's just check. Um, well. Let's see. See, uh, no, Avebury is a separate site. It's close to Stonehenge, but Avebury is a different location. Avebury is a bit north of Stonehenge. Okay, so that's something else. Okay, fine. All right, Windsor. All right, fertile hunting grounds. Uh, can I get, oh, here we go, Otmore. Through, though the waters of the moor are not deep, they are reputed to have healing powers. This is where the Lady of the Lake currently dwells. Her wisdom and power rivals my own. Oh, all right. Winchester, all right. Talking about eggs. St. Leonard's Forest is said here that the Holy Hermit St. Leonard did slay a most fearsome dragon where the saints butt fell up on the ground, leaves the vast spread and flourished in his honor. All right. Southampton, the legend goes that Sir... Sir Beavis, not Butthead, a hero of long ago killed the evil giant Escapart here, the port from which one would, would, would take ship to sail to all parts of the known world. 
Marta Stone. All right. Marta Stone means the speaker's stone. Okay, good to know, I guess, maybe. All right, did we check all this? I think we checked all these up here. All right, so let's go down. This is Glaston Glastonbury Tor. This hill has been revered for countless centuries. Okay, so it's like a pagan kind of thing, I guess. Yeah, many religious orders. So this is pre-Christian pagan sites in, in England. All right. Howlstock. All right. Uh, so that's Camelot. That's Shapwick. We already saw that. Uh, Exeter. All right. This There's a, a well and a chapel just outside this city. All right. Totnes. Totnes. All right. Heartland Point. Bronton. All right, did we uh, did we see everything here? I think we saw the locations here. So let's press F6 to exit. And uh, I think we're supposed to ask Merlin about some of those places. Well, so I'll tell you right now, there are only a handful of those places you can actually visit. The game doesn't let you visit all those places in the map because that would just be too much. There are only like three places on that map that you can actually go to, I think, uh, besides Camelot itself. So let me see, what do we have here? We have... Um, we had Southampton. It is your major port in the south where you must go to take the ship to other lands. Okay, so I guess we'll go there later to take a ship to other lands. Uh, there's Glastonbury Tor, which has been a sacred hill for centuries. The legend of Joseph of Arimathea claims the Grail is hidden there. Oh, okay. Well, why don't we just go there and grab the Grail? Shortcut, speed run. Game over. All right. Uh, and then there was Ottmore. I don't know why I'm capitalizing the... I'm actually taking the trouble to write these in capital letters, even though I, I don't think the game cares. It is a body of water to the north where currently the Lady of the uh, Lady of the Lake dwells. Yeah, we kind of got that from the map already. Uh, okay, cool. Um, what else do we have here? Um, did I... You know what? I think I've done everything here. I think I've done everything that I need to do here now. I think I have actually done um, all the stuff that I intended to do here. So, all right. Thanks, Merlin. You are most welcome. Bye. Say rather Godspeed, for I shall be with you in spirit voice throughout your mission. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Merlin. Godspeed. Boy, that took almost the whole video. That took almost half an hour. I actually probably won't want to do too much uh, beyond that, but... Uh... All right. I guess we're ready to leave then. I'm going to save the game here. I'll say, talked to Merlin. If anybody wonders, Control-C clears the old name of the previous saved game, as I just did there. All right, so let's walk down and uh, let's, let's get out of here. Let us take our leave of this place. Let's open that gate. Certainly, as soon as you have a horse under you, as common sense would require. Well, why can't I just walk around? Uh, why do I need a horse? Can I just, uh, can I just play it solo? All right, fine. Uh, Let's get on the horse. Now your horse is, your war horse is trained to be mounted from the left side. Hold on, there's a a donkey or a mule here. It does not look happy about being chosen for this mission, nor about carrying your pack of provisions. Can I ride the donkey instead? Why would you want to ride a bony little mule when you have your fine stallion? I don't know. Maybe I'm a humble king and don't need the don't feel the need to uh, be so flashy as to to ride on such a, a gleaming steed like this. All right, fine, ride horse. Really? Okay, all right, all right. Get on horse, there we go. Really? Are the, the hoof sounds of the horse gonna accompany me for the whole game? Is that like another reference to Monty Python and the Holy Grail? Oh, now they, they just automatically open the gate for us when we... All right, that's nice. 
One does not get far when the gods are offended. <laughs> All right. The gods are offended. Why are they offended? Well, the reason is because um, I needed to... Um, I needed to go back to that uh, chapel where we were. So let's let's do that. Let's go back to, um, I think it was here. Yes, this is the chapel of the two gods. Okay. As I said in the previous video, obviously the symbol on the right is, the, is a cross, which is obviously the symbol of Christianity. Many, many people pointed out that the symbol on the left, which is supposed, let me look at the symbols again. So that's the cross. On the left is a symbol of Mithras formerly carried upon banners into battle. So contrary to what was claimed in Merlin's room, many people said uh, on the left is actually what's called the, I might be pronouncing it wrong, it's called the Kirchiro. I'll, I'll, I'll write it out. It's, it's, it's written like that. So it's from Greek, I guess. Uh, so in Greek, the X is like a, it's called a, a he or something, or chi or he or something like that. I don't know exactly how it's pronounced. And then the ro or ro is, uh, well, it looks like a P actually. It looks like an, like a, a capital letter P, um, but it's what Greek uses as a letter R that also carries into modern day Cyrillic. If you know Russian or other languages that use the Cyrillic alphabet, you'll know that what lo looks like a P to English speakers and people use the you know, Latin alphabet, is actually an R, so it makes an R, like an R sound. So this symbol on the left, the red symbol there on the left, combines a H with an R, and is actually used as a symbol of Christianity, because it's the first sounds, it's the first two letters of Christ or Christianity in Greek. It's H and then R, which is, you know, like the, the start of the word Christ. Um, so it is also a Christian symbol. So many people were saying, why are they using a Christian symbol on both sides? The symbol on the left is not a symbol of Mithras. It's it's a Christian symbol. Also, um, I don't know much about Mithras, I have to say. I really don't, don't know much about the, Mith the Mithran religion, if that's a word. Uh, I looked it up and it seems kind of... It's kind of esoteric. It's not widely observed in the world today. It seems to have links, or it seems to have some connection with Zoroastrianism, uh, which I also don't know much about. Zoroastrianism is m mostly died out. It was kind of the indigenous, indigenous religion of Iran or Persia before uh, Islam took it over, before Iran became mostly Muslim today. But um, historically, uh, People in Iran were supposed, supposedly Zoroastrians, but I think most people there are not Zoroastrians today. Um, so anyway, yeah, a little bit of uh, information. Like I said, I don't know much about these things, but uh, what you need to do here is uh, basically get blessings from the gods. So if I say pray here, humbling yourself is the first. Yeah, see... In King's Quest, you could pray at the alt. In King's Quest Two, you could pray at the altar just by saying "pray." But no, you can't just pray here. First, you have to say "kneel," and now you have to pray. I suspect that an earthly gift may help your prayers to reach the heavens. Now, that's just a little bit. I don't know, man. That's just a little bit like. I mean, aren't the gods supposed to be with us at all times? Like, do we really need to? use money to all right all right all right put money you can see there's a little uh oh there's a little bowl they are not bowls they are altar candles all right excuse me put the money in the candle then Okay, now you can choose how much money to put in. So you can put in one copper coin, and the game just says, oh, the clunk of a copper coin doesn't seem to arouse much, uh, much excitement from the gods. I guess what you're supposed to do is put in a first a silver coin and then a gold coin. You can also get the same effect of putting in five coppers, but I'll, I'll, I'll put in a, a silver coin. There we go. The sacred flame is lit. You and your mission have been blessed. So if you do this on both sides, 
uh, to you know get the sacred flame lit and bless your mission then you won't have the gate fall on top of you like it did but besides that you can get a little bonus if you put a gold coin in the in the candle because then but wait what is this Mithra sends you visions of your missing knights and listen their voices call out to you in distress Save me, most valiant king. I am injured unto the death by a black fiend. The green leaves will cover my bones unless you are quick. Arthur, I cannot move. I cannot escape. And I am so cold, so terribly cold. Oh, how can she be so heartless? I am lost in the darkness, hidden from light and life, with only the rats to lust my flesh and blood. I will die here unless you help me, my king. Alright. Cool. Alright. Uh, I guess we're done here. On, on this side, at least. So we stand up and then we come over here and do the same thing again. So again, let's kneel and pray. Oh, oh, no, we need an earthly gift to help our prayers reach the heavens. Alright. I just say like put money? Yeah. So like last time, put in the silver first. All right, the flame has been lit. Our mission has been blessed from Jesus this time. But let's put another, let's put a gold coin in. The flame is lit, you've been blessed, and now something shimmers in the air. A vision of the grail appears to you. Christ sends it to remind you that only a man of purity may attain the sacred cup. Remember, the fate of Camelot rests not only upon your finding the grail, but your worthiness to possess it. All right. So yeah, the game has kind of a morality system going on. I mean, it, it, a lot of the game emphasizes you being very noble and, and worthy, and, and which is not necessarily bad, but yeah, it's definitely a um, kind of a morality uh, thing. Oh, hold on, let me, can I say ask about symbols here? Upon the right is the cross, symbol of, of the Christ God who was crucified upon one. On the left is a symbol of Mithras, formerly carried upon banners into battle. Yeah, but it's... People's, yeah, people keep saying it's not a symbol of Christ. All right, all right. I'll go ahead and uh, save here. Prayed and... Um, what's the word for... Gave offerings... All right, I think that's that's enough for one video. By the way, I'll just, at the end here, I'll just mention, um, I guess I was a little naive. So in the previous video, I asked whether uh, Lancelot and Guinevere had actually been, you know, like having sex, like committing adultery, or were they just sort of flirting with each other? Well, I guess I was a little naive. I looked up the, the you know, the legend of Arthur, King Arthur, and they're, they're totally having sex. Like, it's, it's not just like they're just kind of batting their eyes at each other. They're, they're actually, like, like having, you know, extramarital sex. Um, on the one hand, you know, it may be a little bit naive of me to think, oh, maybe they're just, uh, maybe they're just very fond of each other. But I didn't want to assume, you know, I, I don't want to just assume, like, okay, because Merlin at the beginning says, uh, you know, Guinevere's greatest affections are for Lancelot. And I just thought maybe that means she has a crush on him. I mean, you know, it could it could mean that. I mean, obviously, they, they, you know, the game needs to be a little bit more delicate than that. The game is not just going to say, yeah, he's, uh, you know, he's he's porking her when you're not looking. I mean, I mean, the game is, is you know, is trying to be a bit more delicate than that. But I didn't want to just assume that affection means sex, but of course it does. Uh, so yeah, so so the game kind of has like this whole uh, cosmic moral tale going on. And remember, I was saying that uh, adultery wouldn't cause, you know, it, I mean, adultery might be bad, but it's not going to cause the whole kingdom to, to go to pot. Well, normally it wouldn't, but you know, the, it's it's a it's a fantasy story. I mean, the the whole legend of King Arthur is uh, more. A fantasy legend than a true story so yeah in, in real life something like that wouldn't happen but in the story the the kingdom is wasting away because of the the sins of Lancelot and and Guinevere and I guess also that Arthur is tolerating it that Arthur is not doing something to put a stop to it that he's he's allowing them to basically live in sin and whatever so so yeah so that's that's the story that's the uh that's uh that's what's going on here, and also as seen here in the religious aspect. Like again, you need you need to be a pious king. You need to pray to the two gods. You know, pray, pray and offer money to both gods. Um, so yeah, so that's that. Um, 
And you don't need to worry about losing money here. You can give even more. If you want, you can give even more money than that. You can give like all your money to the to the gods here. I don't think it makes a difference. Um, but the money that you lose is okay. We'll go back after this. We'll go back to the treasury and get more money. It doesn't really matter because you can go and get and refill your purse of the treasury after this anyway. So, but I'll, I'll do that next time because this video, video has already gone on a little bit longer than I planned it to. So uh, I'll leave it at that for now. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you folks next time on the further adventures of King Arthur. Arthur in uh, Camelot and also whatever lands lie beyond that in this game. Hope you enjoyed. Until next time, ta-ta for now.